Now, first story, a member of the Supreme Court panel which had the 2020 election petition has defended the dismissal of the NDC flag race petition. The Apex Court in March said John Dramani Mahama failed to prove that no candidate got more than 50% of the votes cast and therefore affirmed the declaration of Nana Kufado as outright winner of the presidential poll. The former president, however, criticized the ruling. I believe that the refusal of the Electoral Commission chairperson to testify in this election petition leaves a very bad precedent for the future. I disagree with the suggestions of our justices that an election petition is akin to any other civil litigation and therefore an EC chairperson whose functions go to the heart of our democracy can by a legal slate of hand avoid accounting for her stewardship in an appropriate forum such as the highest court of the land. Our legal team, led by Mr. Chachuchikata, put together our case in a clear manner, which left no one in doubt about the issues that were at stake. Apart from seeking to ensure compliance with the Constitution and for the true choice of the people of Ghana to be respected, the petition sought to provide opportunity for transparency and accountability in the management of our electoral process. But no one who followed the proceedings of the Supreme Court will be surprised with the judgment pronounced a few hours ago. Much as I'm aware that we are legally bound by the decision of the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court of Ghana, I disagree with the process of the trial and the ruling of the court. Speaking at a high-level stakeholders forum to review the 2020 polls and its aftermath, Justice Gertrude Tokono said the court's calculation when dealing with the election petition showed that the EC chairperson only made an error during her declaration and that President Tekufado got more than 50% of the votes cast. Based on the data, the data in the declaration of the first respondent, the second respondent got more than 50%. Uh, holding is that there is no doubt that in providing particulars of the vote cast, the chairperson of the first respondent announced the figure 13 million four three four five seven four, which was referring to total valid votes cast, which was in actually 13 million one two one 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 one. So the video sent to us showed that she had said that on the, after she had listed all the valid votes for each candidate, she had said on the premise these people got these percentages. And, and so it was a case of the petitioner that if she had said total votes cast, then the court should use the total votes cast to recalculate the percentages. So the petitioner questioned the validity of the declaration, and we said yes, she had made an error in describing the total votes as total valid votes, because there are different figures. But from the evidence on the record, you, it could be seen that the petitioner was, had built his case around the figure of 30 million 434 that had been erroneously announced as the total valid votes cast. But the evidence also showed that after, the, after she de detected the error in announcing the figure of 30 million 434 as the total valid vote, the error was corrected the next day in the press release. Clearly, the petitioner recognized that the total valid votes were 30 million 121 one 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 and not thirteen million four three four five seven four. And on the basis of that, from all the evidence, there's no legal basis for anyone to contend that a different figure of thirteen million four three four should be used as the total valid votes. So it was all about those words. In measuring more, the more effect in instruments, that the is prima facie evidence. And so we look at the legal import of that constitutional direction of prima facie evidence. And using Article 297 and Section 22 of the Interpretation Act, 
we appreciated that if a public officer corrects their mistake, it is supported by law because this is what Section 22 provides. Where an enactment confers a power or imposes a duty on a person to do an act or thing of an administrative or executive character or to make an appointment, the power may be exercised or performed in order to correct an error or omission in a previous exercise. So we were of a considered opinion that the correction was appropriate. Now, one major issue of concern that came up during the polls was the claim of vote padding by the NDC. But Justice Stokono said the NDC should have brought pink sheets to back that claim. So issue three was whether or not the second respondent still had reached the 50% threshold with the inclusion of Techim and Sal. And on a review of that, we said it is important to say that at the time the petition was filed, the results of the presidential election at the Chiman South had already been announced and the results had been certified. So we had to use the appropriate figures. And when we used the appropriate figures, we saw that it gave the second respondent a percentage of 51.259%. Issue five was whether or not that there was alleged, there was a vote pattern because an, some allegation had been put in the petition about vote pattern. And it, it was supposed to concern 5,662 votes in 32 constituencies, but in a wrong aggregation of votes totaling 960. But on the exhibit F that was brought to court, there was a spreadsheet alleging vote padding of 4,693 votes in 26 constituencies. And so we said we, we would have expected that the pink sheets of those polling stations would have been exhibited to prove the allegation instead of a spreadsheet. The conclusion was that even if one took out these 4,693 votes, uh, it would not impact on the 6 million uh, plus votes that the candidates were dealing with. The Supreme Court judge also put out what is expected from justices who will sit on future petitions. So we concluded with what is a direction to courts when it comes to uh, election petitions. A threefold duty that had been first enunciated in the English case of Morgan and Simpson, which we found useful to adopt that if the election was, and so it would be useful for political players to appreciate that any election petition would look at this threefold uh, duty. If the election was conducted so badly that it was not substantially in accordance with the law as the elections, the election is initiated. So our summary was that we initiated this principle that an election would be voided upon the occurrence or infractions that actually affect the votes of the citizens cast at the polling stations and not the incidence of administrative errors or mistakes committed by officers charged with the conduct of such election, unless those errors or mistakes affect the results. So this is a quote from Adinyora JSC that we ended the petition with. Um, courts usually apply the election code to protect not to defeat the right to vote, but public policy favors salvaging the election and giving effect to the voters' intent. Consistently, we are looking for the voters' intent. What did the voters vote? How did they vote? What, what, what were the valid votes? If you can identify the valid votes, then that is what the courts are interested in. Right, so this event, or the justice was speaking at a review of the 2020 election, and there were several CSOs that were there, including Codeo. And uh, we have on the line the acting chairperson of Codeo, Sheikh Aramiyao. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us, uh, Sheikh Aramiyao. So a lot has been said over the period that you have been deliberating over the 2020 election. Would you say this exercise has been useful? I mean, uh, definitely. Um, it, has, it was a very useful exercise uh, in terms of the, the quality of the members of the panel for discussion that came and the depth of the discussion, the commitment and the passion uh, with which 
uh, panel members discussed uh, the issue. In fact, I will say without any fear of contradiction, as I stated in my um, welcome remarks, uh, the idea is to learn, the discuss, learn the lessons, and such lessons as will inform and guide recommendations that will help uh, enhance and improve uh, the future of elections um, in Ghana. And uh, throughout the two and a half days that we have been at uh, ADA, uh, that has been our engagement. And uh, I will say that uh, um, we really achieved our, our, our result. And I hope that um, we, as part of our um, um, this, this decision, we intend to put a, a certain kind of um, um, a committee of CSOs and other state organizations to push forward some of the recommendations that has come, has come out uh, from the, the workshop. Uh, that's, that's, that's what we have done. All right. Now, what are some of the issues that came out of the deliberations? Yeah, I mean, uh, among the issues, we, we considered matters of um, security elections, uh, security of elections uh, and its uh, and management of, of, of results is one of the areas uh, that we, uh, because um, if you were abreast with the, the, the problems that emanated from the declaration of results uh, and the court issues, you will notice that a lot came out um, related to how the results were, were declared. Um, and, and the misgivings that the uh, political party affected, you know, the petitioning uh, or the petitioner uh, took to court mean, meant that in the process of declaration, there were some issues. So we try to look at that and understand. Uh, you notice that's why we brought uh, her leadership to Kono uh, to come and talk, talk to us. We also look at issues of security. For example, um, you will notice that we noticed that in the process of election, almost everything was smooth until it came to matters of coalition. So a coalition, all the tiers of coalition are uh, issues that we thought that uh, security need to be tightened up ar around the centers of coalition, i.e. Um, the constituency coalition centers, regional coalition centers, and indeed even the national coalition centers, all these areas because of the crowd, the overcrowding around this place, um, it did not allow the calmness and the peace that will allow a more efficient work uh, to be done. So that security threat there was an issue. And then also, we also look at uh, the, the cost of uh, political campaigning um, and, and, and how it contributes to the corruption of our ele uh, election system or the corruption of our political system. Uh, how it's, it undermines political integrity, um, and so on. So it's also one of the things that we, we considered, and we, we, we think that uh, something needs to be done about it. Then also, we look at the, the work of the Electoral Commission itself, um, um, the, the, the conduct of election itself, and, and challenges that have has emanated, uh, some of the areas also that we, 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 we considered. Um, these and others are uh, the, the issues that we consider. And I think that they affect all the dimensions of our election. And uh, in fact, we also considered the role of the media. Um, Evan Spencer was there and he, he gave a, a very excellent pre presentation about uh, the work of, of the media, uh, the uh, uh, media for uh, Foundation for, for Media in West Africa uh, also also gave some, some presentation um, as to um, how the media could play a role in ens ensuring that uh, we had a very smooth uh, election. There was the, the, the challenge about um, who to call election first and the contestation among media houses as to uh, who wants to come out first and call, right. and call the, 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 the election. That was also a matter um, for us to discuss so that we avoid the, the rush, the rush to come out uh, pronouncing election results when we are not very sure about uh, certain things. However, um, for the media houses that called the election, all of them were of the view that they had their figures right and they, they were very sure uh, about the results that they, they, 
they, they give. All right, these, Sheikh, these are some, some of the issues that, that we All right, Sheikh, what are some of the recommendations uh, that have been made to improve our elections going forward? Yeah, I mean, uh, though the recommendations have not come out um, in, in a formal way that I can, I can read to you, but just the highlights of um, some of the some of the, some of some of the issues. All right. Um, recommendations. One of them are, are, are that um, the the EC the EC must show responsibility in enforcing um, electoral laws um, that has to do with uh, with uh, political parties. For example, um, the declaration of the their uh, their account and and. Uh, clear regulation that has to do with nomination uh, of uh, candidates or the disqualification of, of candidates. I mean, these are things that we said uh, EC must come out with that one clearly. And then also regulations regarding um, declaration of results or the correction of declared results uh, is also something um, that we recommended that it, it needs to be made clear. Um, um, the issue of the transmission of, of elections from polling stations to, um, to coalition centers, uh, constituency coalition centers, and to regional coalition centers. We have recommended another tier that an each, there must be a coalition center for each electoral area. So that tier will mean that EC will need some more resources to create that level so that we reduce the congestion at the constituency coalition center and also reduce the congestion at the regional coalition coalition's um, center. All right. Um, these were the, some of the um, recommendations, re recommendations uh, right. that have um, uh, come out from, from the discussions. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Karumi Al-Shaibu, who is the uh, acting chairman of Kodeo. You're watching Joanie's Prime.